Now, John Barryman is right here. He's a man of many talents, of course, uh, singing, presenting, acting, currently starring as what he calls a misunderstood hero in the show Arrow, but he's also a successful author. His new book, Conjurer, written with his big sister, Carol, is out now. It is. And this, you see, when I read your books, I always think that they are very cinematic. Mm -hmm. I can imagine them being TV shows or, or being movies. Is that something well, you'd like to do? Yeah, Carol and I, uh, when we're doing the books, and she goes away and does all the writing part of it after we've done all the, the character building and all that kind of stuff. I, I said to her, write it like it will go on screen, like it's ah, going to be in the cinema. And right. uh, uh, the first three books uh, prior to this, which were the Hollow Earth series, were in discussions in the States about that at the moment mm. with uh, some different uh, production Great. companies. So fingers crossed. Good. And uh, uh, we've got that going on board. But this one, again, it's something that you could, you could put on screen or on television. And it's a continuation. It's the next series uh, of the books. The, the twins are from Hollow Earth are involved, but it's more the story of um, uh, the character called uh, Remy Dupree, and he is a, a young African-American kid in London. He's homeless, he's on the streets, and he's there because he's trying to find uh, the reason and the, the people who were responsible for the murder of his mother and his aunt who were raising him in Chicago. And he uh, he's a conjurer, and his ability where the twins' ability were drawing things and bringing that to life and making all things happen with art, his is, because of my connection, music. Ah, and he okay. can all, all uh, you know, uh, change reality and uh, also make things happen with sound and music. And the twins meet up with him to help him because they're also part of a group now which is like the MI6 of <laughs> the art world. Right. And they're no longer stuck on the island in Scotland. They're travelling around helping other conjurers which and animaries uh, around the world. It's fantastic. I mean, did this come from when you were working on Torchwood and you got into that whole sort of sci-fi world? I've, or was, I've, are you always? I've always, been, yeah. I, I've always been a nerd and a geek, and Carol's always been a nerd and a geek, and we just love our family's very big on storytelling. My dad, to this day, tells stories about, and he's never been in the, you know, he was never in the war. Right. He tells stories about him in the <laughs> as war. If he with, was. Well, as if he was with the grandkids when he lost his finger, but he stitched it back on. <laughs> it's great now. But it's just so we're big storytellers. That's great. And that's where it kind of stems from. Ah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. You talked about uh, grandkids. Is it something that you are thinking about? Uh, you know, because you not grandkids because you're too no. young. But to give your to give your to give your daddy some more some more grandchildren. Um, is it something because you're so busy though? That's the trouble. Well, that's the other thing. Is it is it fair for me to have to to say to Scott and I we if we had kids. For for me to then leave them at home with well, him. you're working all over well, the place. Well, I'm working all over yeah. the place. But, you know, sure. people do it. People travel and uh, people, you know, I'm not saying we're, we're not going to, but we, in a way we've kind of done something in Palm Springs. We've created a house called Sanctuary where we, uh, it's foster kids who are in um, group homes. Okay. And we've bring, we've brought, we bring them out of the group homes when they're 18 and myself and a bunch of other guys and girls and families in Palm Springs are going to help them get on their feet to get careers, college education, and they live in this house while they're being guided further on in life to, to help that's themselves. That's brilliant, John. I didn't know you did that. That's oh, yeah. a no, really, we're, we're really good thing yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really life-changing. That's going to change their well, lives hope, forever. Hope, yeah, because the, the thing in group, when you go into group foster homes, it's known in the foster world that that's... You're, you can't be helped anymore. Ah. And you come out with maybe low self-esteem. And what sure. we want to do is, and most of the kids are LGBT kids. So we really want to make them feel that they are, that, to know that they're worth something absolutely. and that they absolutely can do stuff in life. But you don't need to do that. You don't, you know what I mean? You, you're, why, what, what makes you want to do that? Is well, it giving something back, I guess? Yeah, or? but, uh, yeah, I mean, yes. And, and partially because I, I've, I've been given a really great life by the, my fans and by the people who followed me and people who buy the books and watch the TV shows. I, I have a great life. And so for me to give back to other people who might need some help or, you know, there was a young lady on, on Twitter and she was going to bed one night and she tweeted she was doing a GoFundMe thing that she needed a wheelchair. And I know this girl from coming to see me at c conventions and things. And uh, she, was only, she was trying to raise a certain amount of money. Sure. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? I said to Scott, can we just make her night? And so I filled the GoFundMe, bought her wheelchair, one that she can raise, and I said to her, there's the money, go buy the wheelchair, get it made, next time you see me, have the buy the one that raises up so you can look, look me in the eye. 
she was gobsmacked. So it's things like that yeah. just make somebody's And you'd day. probably feel better about it even than she did. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it is, it's a lovely thing to do. So let's still let that write the cheque <laughs> going. Mm. <laughs> no, it is. It's a, it's a great thing to do. It really is. So as well as the books, you're still in Arrow, of course. Yes, that yes. totals alone. Season, season five is coming up and then uh, we're, we're in negotiations at the moment. So there might be some other things lovely. coming out of that also. Excellent. But yeah, and uh, it, it's, a, it's nice to play a bad guy. Yeah. It's lovely to be a wee <laughs> naughty boy. A wee naughty boy is good. <laughs> Speaking of which, we'd love to see you back in Doctor Who or Torchwood. That'd be so, I mean, that character was brilliant, wasn't he? L yeah, listen, if I've always said this. If they ask, sure. I would go back at the drop of a hat because Captain Jack Harkness changed my life. And mm. uh, he's, uh, he's, he and uh, Rose Tyler, Billy Piper and myself are two of the... The, what is it? And the Radio Times, we are the two highest voted and uh, pop, most popular uh, companions of the wow. Doctor ever. Wow, yeah. that's okay. Even Don't quote me, not ever, <laughs> but with the, with the gender, because someone will be like, no, 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 you didn't. Da, 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 da. Oh, you've got to be so you careful I mean. when you're talking you know to I mean. Whovians, yeah. but you're right. Yeah. John, this is out now. It is great to see you. Yeah, great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. so, so much. Appreciate Brilliant. it.